Norman, Oklahoma is a large city, landmass wise. It's actually 189 square miles total. Norman's also the third largest city in Oklahoma. So in my head, I really divide the city between east and west, just for location purposes. And a lot of people will speak this way about it. So what are the differences? Let's talk about the pros and cons of east and west Norman. I thought a lot about how to show you east versus west, and I really decided that the map was the best way to do this. If you do have more questions, you can find my email in the description below, and I'll also um, link it at the end for you. Okay, so this is Norman. You can see this red dotted outline. This is um, the city boundaries of Norman, Oklahoma. So you can see that Norman's really big. It covers a lot of land area. You'll see the lake over here, which we'll talk about here in just a bit. And then you see I-35, the interstate, running right through Norman. So this is our dividing line between East Norman on this side and West Norman on this side. So you'll see that East Norman is a lot bigger than West Norman. Uh, West Norman is smaller. It's a lot smaller. And I'm going to zoom in here in just a second. So a couple of things to kind of give you an idea of like where things are. You see this, it says Fred Jones Museum of Art. So that's actually the University of Oklahoma. So that's where the University of Oklahoma sits. And I'll zoom in here in a second on that. Like I said, the lake is out here really far east and Norman goes all the way around it. And then we see West Norman, like I said, is just a lot smaller. So let's zoom in. All right, so West Norman has a lot less land area and it's not just uh, this part that's like less, but it's actually because a lot of this is actually floodplain. So you'll see 48th Avenue Northwest on this side and this is where the floodplain is gonna start going west for the most part. So you'll see all these you know, little squigglies of white lines on this Google Maps and that is um, neighborhoods right so you'll see like past 48th street there's not very many neighborhoods and that's because it's all a floodplain so um properties out there are mostly horse properties and they're usually 10 acres or around that so you don't really find anything smaller than that in the floodplain because they can't have anything smaller than that so these neighborhoods here tend to be very popular um, in West Norman. So on east side Norman, we still have floodplains. Of course, there's just, it's just set up differently. Like the way everything is. There's a lot of floodplain up here by Franklin, um, but in town you won't find, you know, floodplain. I'm talking about floodplain a lot because people have been asking me a ton of questions about this. And it's something that's disclosed to you if you purchase a house, something that your insurance will tell you, it's something that the homeowner has to tell you, and it's just not super common to have a house in a floodplain. That's why I wanted to address this. So overall, West Norman, a lot smaller than East Norman. I also use the words Central Norman sometimes in talking to people. So Central Norman to me is between 35 and the railroad tracks or 77. So the railroad tracks, you can see them, they're like this thin gray line here running down Norman. They kind of run in parallel with uh, Flood Avenue, which is this. So the area between that Flood Avenue and I-35 is kind of my idea of Central Norman, although it's still technically East in the way that I'm speaking. And those houses there in Central Norman, I love them a lot because a lot of them were built in the 50s and 60s and they just tell such a cool story about how Norman grew, right? The second pro and con we'll talk about is just different amenities in East versus West Norman. So the main thing I wanna talk about is grocery stores. And grocery stores, there's just not many on the west side, honestly. So you see that we do have Sam's Club. It is on the west side of Norman. There is a Costco. There is a Costco, but it's in Moore, okay? So we don't have a Costco in Norman at all. It got built in Moore. Uh, it opened last summer, I believe. And then we also have a neighborhood market Walmart on the west side. And the neighborhood market is right here. Um, if you're not familiar with that, it's Walmart, but only groceries, not like any like non-grocery items, I guess. There's not, no service center and all that stuff. I think they do have a gas station. I can't remember. No, maybe they don't. I honestly don't know. I can't picture it in my head right now. <laughs> and then on the west side or on the east side of Norman, we have a ton of different grocery stores. So honestly, the easiest ones too um, for west side Normanites to get to 
are gonna be this crest, which is right here. We also have a target, which is a huge super target. People always walk in and say, oh my gosh, this place is ginormous. It's really big. And then we also, there is a homeland right here, which if you're not familiar with homeland, it's like Albertsons or Reesers. Those are the two that I know that are similar to it. And then there's also a Sprouts. I love Sprouts. It's our favorite grocery store. And it's down here on Main Street. It's gonna be right in here. And then we also have a natural grocers, it's over here. There's some other, there's like Homelands on the east side as well. So there's lots of grocery stores and places for you to shop. Overall, Norman has three super Walmarts and then a bunch of neighborhood markets. Like I can't count the neighborhood markets right now. There's a lot of them. So plenty of grocery shopping for you to do. You're usually not more than 10 to 15 minutes away from a grocery store, whether you live in East Norman or West Norman. One thing that people don't always take advantage of in Norman, which I talk about this because I love it, is library. We have a really amazing library system here in Cleveland County, surrounding counties. It's called the Pioneer Library System, but there's branches in each city. But Norman has three branches. And the closest one I'm uh, closest to where I live, which is in like Northeast Norman, is going to be the one in downtown Norman, which is the central library. I believe it's the largest one for the Pioneer Library System. And then there's also a branch in West Norman. It used to be a Borders. And then there's a really cool branch in East Norman. Um, it's one that they built a few years ago and it's really amazing looking. So you can actually order books from any um, of the branches and get it delivered within a few days if they have it available. So like I can order a book from Purcell and have it delivered um, to my branch here in Norman, which I love that. And there's so, like, it's just such a great system. So we have a really cool system for library stuff. And it's not just books, of course, there's movies, there's online stuff. Um, and then the library itself is just beautiful. So let's talk about downtown for a second. I actually used to live in West Norman. So I lived over here, right here. And it was fine, it was great, I liked it. We recently moved to East Norman. So now I live over here. And the my favorite thing about living over here is that I'm close to downtown. I love downtown Norman. It has some really cool restaurants, has my favorite coffee shop, which is Grey Owl. And then it's just, I like the vintage feel. I like the old town feel. So that's one of the reasons I like living in East Norman so much. And in West Norman, I just had to drive a lot further to get to downtown. So you may or may not like that. So downtown is where original Norman is, and that's literally how we call it, like in our realtor system is original town of Norman. Downtown, of course, is where the courthouse is. It's where all those older houses are. And a lot of them are closer to campus too. Of course, the University of Oklahoma was established in 1889. So we have a few hundred year old houses, not very many, but those are mostly located in the original town, but mostly near campus. So you get a lot of like historical stuff down there. And we do have three historical districts in East Norman, which are going to be over here, kind of in this area. So this is downtown, this area that's offset. This is our Amtrak station. That's what that is right there. So you can actually get on a train and go to Fort Worth or Ardmore or whatever stops it makes along the way. I've never taken it, honestly. And then the University of Oklahoma has some of their different, like there's three different historical districts. So there's two, all three of them are near the University of Oklahoma, two are closer. Um, to the University of Oklahoma and one is closer to downtown. So I do have, uh, I think, four videos about downtown Norman and you can check those out. Those are going to be on my channel and you can check them out right over here if you want to watch those about downtown Norman and take a tour. So another kind of pro, I guess, for East Norman is the University of Oklahoma. University of Oklahoma is located in East Norman. A lot of times if you were um, working in or at OU, you may want to live in East Norman, though I know a lot of professors that live on the west side or other other members of the workforce at OU. OU is the number one employer in Norman, meaning it employs the most people. This is the University of Oklahoma right here. So everything's located here. University of Oklahoma is about one square mile. And so it's all kind of packed together. 
there's nothing really separate from it until you, of course, you get to like the Oklahoma City campus, which is like OU Health Sciences and the business center up there. OU is one of my favorite things about Norman because like there's nothing better than, you know, the feel of a collegiate campus, especially in fall. There's about 25,000 students that go to school. I believe it's 25,000, like don't quote me on it, uh, that go to school here in Norman. And it's just, it's just a different feel when all of those students are here. So I, I do have some other videos about OU, so you'll have to check those out. Those are also on my channel. Now, I want to add a caveat about Norman and East versus West. West Norman is much newer than parts of East Norman, specifically downtown. So like there was nothing <laughs> in West Norman prior to the 70s. There were no houses. Everything was kind of built in the late 60s, early 70s. And it was all just like pasture land out there. So it does have a different feel because of that. So previously, West Norman, um, you know, before like 70s and 80s would have been the area west of the tracks. But right now I'm talking about the area of the railroad tracks is what I'm talking about. But for our purposes, West Norman is the area west of I-35 and East Norman is the area east of I-35. Okay, let's talk about house prices. So house prices are going to be higher in West Norman. So West Norman carries a higher price per square foot. You're just gonna pay more. And a lot of that's because there's no land. The school ratings play a part into that. I mean, location, like there's a ton of different reasons why house prices would be higher, but it doesn't mean it's necessarily a better place to live for you, depending on what you want. So like I said, Handsome and I did used to live in West Norman and I did like it a lot. Uh, my yoga studio was really close to our house and I still go there. It just takes me a little bit longer to get there. Handsome's gym is in West Norman and he goes um, two or three times a week early in the morning. There's a lot of stuff on the west side. I love the Starbucks on the west side because there's no drive through So it feels like that neighborhood coffee shop. I wish there were some other coffee shops. There is one or two, but Starbucks is the main one and it is like where the community kind of gathers in the morning. However, so last year we moved to East Norman. So we live in like North East Norman, like I said, about two miles from downtown. And I love this location. I love it because I'm still close to the interstate, but I'm really close to downtown. Like I said, my favorite coffee shop, OU is really close. Like it's just easier for me to access Norman from here. So like I said, it all depends on what you want and where you want to live in Norman and what you want available to you. So one of the cons of West Norman is that there's not much land available. Like I said, a lot of this is floodplain. Going north, you're in more, which is fine. It's a great city. It's just not Norman. Going south is well, literally a floodplain as well. And just really not Norman. Like some of them, some of these houses down here, still have a Norman address that are really in Goldsby, but they actually have a Norman address, but it just depends on how close you want to be to town. Town meaning like the grocery store, <laughs> right? So there's gonna be a lot more available land out here in East Norman. And in certain parts of East Norman, you do have to have 10 acres in order to build a new house and to get a well and septic and all that stuff. People that live out here do have well and septic. Our internet is actually amazing too in East Norman because we do have fiber in East Norman. It used to be not very good, but now it's amazing. There's not very many new houses in West Side Norman. There are some, Carrington Lakes comes to mind. Um, there are some brand new houses in there, though not very many. And then there's a lot of houses built in this century, but a lot of houses built in the 70s and 80s. That's the 1970s and 1980s, if you didn't catch that. Another plus about East Norman is going to be the lake. So this is like Thunderbird. It's giant, as you can see, it kind of looks like a funky boot with all these little things coming off of it. So it does have two marinas, it has a bunch of boat docks. There aren't any houses built on the lake. Like you can't have a house with a dock. That's not how it works for this lake. The different lakes in Oklahoma work in different ways, right? So a lot of people will live around the lake and then take their boat out there um, in order to fish or whatever. You, there's also two swimming beaches and then you can ride horses out there um, and you can hike out there as well and like take picnic and all that stuff. So it is fun. However, like from my house where I live, like way up here, it takes me 30 minutes to get out there, 30 minutes. So if the lake is part of your life, then you may wanna live a little bit closer. Lake Thunderbird is a man-made lake and it is also a state park as well. 
Another consideration that people have to think about as you know they're living in Norman or thinking about moving to Norman is travel time. Like I said, it takes me 30 minutes to get to the lake. So if the lake's important to you, you may want to live a little bit closer than 30 minutes away. And so if you want to get to the lake, then maybe West Norman. If you want to get to the lake quickly, then maybe West Norman is not the place for you. But if you want to drive to Oklahoma City every day to downtown, then West Norman probably is a good place for you because the access to the interstate is really easy. There are so many different things to take into consideration as you're looking at locations in Norman. And house prices will vary based on the location. Like for instance, if you're working at Tinker Air Force Base, a lot of people will choose to live out east here because you can take Sunny Lane or Sooner Road all the way up to Tinker, which Tinker is oh, up here. You can see it. Oh, it just zoomed in for me, didn't it? So Tinker's up here, and that way a lot of people take Sunny Lane and Sooner Road. Let me get it up here for you. These streets, this is Sunny Lane, and this is Sooner Road. So that you don't have to get on the interstate in the morning, but that's totally up to you. That's just something that I've noticed that people who work at Tinker, that this is what they do. So I've mentioned the train tracks a few times. Train tracks are a big deal in my head because the town I grew up in, which is Claremore, has a ton, a ton of train tracks and a ton of trains that go through every day. So people will build their day around the trains. In Norman, you know, we have one set of tracks and the trains do sit <laughs> sometimes for a little bit longer than you would want. And sometimes you can get caught by a train. Although to me, it's not very much because I just did grow up with like a lot of trains and it wasn't uncommon for us to be stopped by two trains in one outing and like have to sit there for 10 minutes. But the trains here, this is the track. It's, I'm sorry, it's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can zoom in. It's this like light gray line we have an underpass in Norman. So if there is a train sitting, you can get around it. You just have to go on Robinson to do that. So this is Robinson right here. You see the Westwood Park, that's a, um, a golf course. And then you see where the railroad tracks and Robinson intersect. So that is where the underpass is. So if you're sitting behind a train, then this is where you have to go to get around it in Norman. There's one in Moore as well. And we also don't have train whistles in Norman, so they don't blow their horns as they're coming through town. If you want to see more of Robinson Street, be sure to check out my tour. I'll, I'll link it here for you. So that way you can see like kind of what Robinson looks like. It's a really big street. They've done a good job of making it wider and helpful for people to get across town. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and be sure to watch this video next and I'll see you next time.